So it's the end of June and Star Citizen has been in development for about half of 2024 now, as well as around 245 days since CitizenCon in October of 2023. I think today would be a great time to take a look back and maybe just give them a little bit of a report card on how well they've done so far this year. And since this video is pretty game development focused, before we get into that, I have the perfect sponsor for you guys. Thank you to Boot.dev for sponsoring today's video. This one's for all you armchair developers in the comments. You you yourself can become a back-end web developer using boot.dev's innovative and really smart lessons towards your goals. You will learn back-end web dev programming languages like Python and Go, but what makes these lessons so different and cool is they use modern game design to create a self-paced but captivating RPG game that will teach you to code. It's not just fun and games though, their philosophy is to use those games to get you to write a lot of code because they believe that getting your hands dirty and shipping projects is the only way to learn. On top of that, they have an active Discord community that will help you if you're stuck, but even maybe help you prepare for technical interviews that may be coming up. Boot.dev never wants their students to feel like they aren't getting value. So they offer a 30-day, no questions asked, refund policy, as well as a free demo of every course and its interactive features. So click the link in the description and use code SALTYMIKE to get 25% off your first payment for Boot.dev. That's 25% off your first month or year, depending on the subscription you choose. And yeah, that's for you armchair devs again. <laughs> All right, since everyone watches opinion videos on the internet, but hates when people have opinions on the internet, let's start out with some caveats. I think this video would be just super fun to say all the things that I love that CIG did this year and talk about some of the things that I wasn't as happy with and what they can improve on. The video is meant to inspire you to think about the same things, and I'm gonna focus on a few categories for simplicity and talk in more depth on some of those things within those categories. The categories will be as follows, new content, quality of life improvements, tech, and communication. And just a note, I may mention some 324 stuff as I have played some of it, and they are now sharing a lot of content included with it. So for new content, let's start out with some of the stuff I thought was good. Distribution centers being added to the game is a really nice improvement to the mundane outposts we've been experiencing for a really long time now. They come with unique missions, NPCs, and more. Are they perfect? Absolutely not. But do I think they will be a huge part of the game's experience going forward into 4.0 and all the way to 1.0? Yes. They basically seem to serve as factory nodes for some companies and play a really big role in the cargo update coming in 324, it seems, as well. Vehicle modularity is next, and honestly, I don't own any ships with it, so my level of excitement around the feature is really low. But that doesn't mean that it isn't awesome. Modularity is something that's been a thorn in the side of CIG for years, constantly pushing it back, and it's a blocker for a lot of cool ships that really need to be in players' hands sooner than later. Then we got the Arena Commander Engineering Mode. You guys know I really enjoyed this. It's a nice look into the future in terms of ships no longer exploding so easily, but at the same time, this is so early and there's so many variables yet to come. It isn't something I sunk my teeth into the way I thought I would have. The FPS map system is pretty good. Um, I have to remind myself that it's there and that it works, partly because most locations don't utilize it yet, but the places that do, it does come in handy. In terms of things that I didn't really like, the first would be the creature hunting. It feels so out of place for right now, whether it's because the AI are just so bad, the missions being incredibly basic, or the lack of crafting for the materials that you gather from these animals, these just didn't hit the way they could have. They do seem to have a lot in mind for this, and it'll likely improve in the future, but yeah, they didn't really start off on the right foot. The dynamic crosshair. This is a weird one. I actually like it. It comes in handy to know when you've killed a downed player or NPC. What I don't like is how handy it actually is. I wish I had a clip of this, but early in 323, I shot a player when I was bugged and I didn't have a crosshair with a sniper rifle. I wasn't sure if they died or not. I had to investigate and it was intense. I think the dynamic crosshair is simply too available for how powerful and useful it actually is. I think the same will be included with the light enhancement optics coming in 324. If they are too easy to get or find, they won't feel like an upgrade or a choice. It's just what you have to run with. Backpack reloading and ammo repulling are easily the best features added from the FPS side. I would say that an, the number of mags that you can hold in a bag might be way too high to the point where you never really have to worry about running out of ammo, but the system works and it removes so much friction in the player experience 
I love it. Okay, you're probably thinking right now, this was supposed to be the biggest patch ever, and that's all the new content they had. 323 was huge, even without the cargo content, but I would say 90% of it fell into the quality of life or updating older features and tech rather than making new content. So let's start out with the most controversial quality of life update, master modes. This went out about as well as I expected it would. Now, I don't love entirely what they did, but I don't absolutely hate it either, right? We all know it took a ton of work to get every ship working with this, so there was bound to be quite a few issues, and they certainly had them. Yogi has been open with his disappointments or things that he wants to change, and I'm seriously just indifferent about all of it for right now because it just doesn't feel complete. They seem to be saying that they want to improve on what they don't like, but saying and doing are two totally different things. But not much we can do about it, right? Other than hope that they improve it further. Our faith has to be in them in this, or otherwise, yeah, we're just done, right? It does seem to be a decent starting point. More people are playing Arena Commander than ever before, and generally the skill floor feels a bit higher, but the barrier of entry into combat feels a bit lower. Now, the star map. I absolutely love the search function. The map looks better. It is more functional and usable than in the past. Yeah, there's not a lot of bad things to say about it. The only real issue is that I have nearly all the same bugs with the quantum travel system that were never fixed. So this is 100% a visual and user experience improvement, and I just wish it was more than that, right? EVA tier 2, this is probably the most polished improvement they made. We went from something that was so bad to something that just works smoothly. And like it worked from the first Evo Cotti patch and never really needed much feedback. My only grip is that there was some weird issue when aiming in EVA, but they have a plan for like an arena commander map and that should really help get feedback to kind of fix that. Now the player interaction system, we still can't punch doors open. So I kind of have to give this one an F. I'm just kidding, but it absolutely does not work as well as they described at CitizenCon or the following ISC and SCL shows. The F icon sometimes is hard to make appear, but overall the system is still a vast improvement on what we had before. This is absolutely a smaller step forward than it probably should have been, but a step forward and not a step back. Looting UI is hard to give a super high grade though, because it isn't really the default, right? It feels like it's half in and was one of the features that might've been like rushed out because of release dates because they wanted to sell a ship or something. The improved functionality in it is nice, like clicking weapons or ammo over is much better, but this will be a common theme, I think, with a lot of stuff. Losing basic functionality that we had before, like splitting items, doesn't make a whole lot of sense to not be included. Having to swap between two inventory UIs is a clunky system and honestly should not be something CIG should be so proud of right now. This trend continues in 324 where we lose even more functionality and gain more friction with the item banks and freight elevators. Kind of unacceptable, right? Other UI like the visor and lens are okay. Maybe a bit cluttered on the screen. I would love to be able to customize it or turn the UI on and off as I like with a, maybe like a keybind or something. Maybe there is one. Let me know in the comments. The new Moby Glass UI though is nice. I really do enjoy that. Now, I think if there was an overall grade for quality of life improvements, I think CIG would really be up there because they made a lot of improvements and many of them I think are poised to make the game a lot more enjoyable when we have more features and gameplay, I guess, and tech to interact with. So for now, some of these feel less exciting than I think they could have been, uh, but might have a really big impact for a long time. Believe it or not, there were five tech cards in the 323 roadmap, the main one being the replication layer split. For now, all this does is cause a player to no longer have to re-enter a server after it's crashed. They wait anywhere from one to five minutes and the server will recover and they can keep playing. Unfortunately, many of the content teams did not convert their work to function with this system. Harvestables like mineable rocks and salvage panels duplicate themselves on server recovery, where if you salvage, you can double your money, but if you're mining rocks, it can basically make it impossible to mine. But in the end, this wasn't really about the patch or anything in 323. It was about 
server meshing. This was one of the biggest hurdles to getting to that milestone. Now, speaking of meshing, in February, we had a test that included Pyro, and in EVO, we even had a jump point experience. This is hard to grade, though. Everyone seems to be having different experiences with the system. I had some awful experiences in the larger player tests of 600 and 800, while the 200 player test was just kind of okay. Uh, but I don't think doubling a player count in a game that they are now describing as an MMO to 200 players is worth the 12 year wait for anyone, right? Their goals are obviously significantly higher. And I have to say, I'm really disappointed in the lack of tests post February. We did not get to see them work towards their larger goals because of this. Uh, yeah, so at the time of recording, I gotta say, I'm really disappointed, but we just recently did have a server meshing test. It just was about their hardware on their end and there were no forward facing improvements to the tech at all on our end. Now, water rendering tech looks cool and that's what it's supposed to be. Sure, it could be better and it got much better since Evocati, but I think it does the job on the immersion front and it's a bit of a resource hog. Vulcan rendering and image upscaling, I will bundle together as they're all suffering from similar issues. They're just getting in and appears to be a bit more work to get them fully functional. The performance improvements from these features for me aren't that great as I would have kind of hoped from what they said at CitizenCon uh, with Vulcan not really even being fully implemented yet. We can expect to see performance boosts at a later date, but we don't even have like some of the improvements there at all. That's just kind of in to make sure it's stable, but not in fully. The last one was cloud tech. And yeah, just like the water stuff, it looks cool if you can run it on your machine with them dialed up. Now for communication, I think this year is probably their highest grade on communication for me ever, but that doesn't mean the marks are high or they're even passing in some cases. ISC has been pretty solid this year and every week until recently, I feel like there was always something cool going on. Star Citizen Live, not as much. News flash, live streaming is hard, especially when your game releases its first update of the year on May 10th, right? Like, how? How is he supposed to make it good? It's it's not going to be easy. Now, for the same reasons, the roadmap has probably been the worst it's been in a while. Many people are getting frustrated with the bi-weekly update of how the progress tracker update is coming soon. Guys, it's basically July. Like, what the hell, right? Most of the communication on Spectrum, though, has been pretty good. Uh, sure, we get devs like Yogi putting their foot in their mouth sometimes, but man, the passion is there and they care so much to take their time out and share stuff with the backers. The monthly report is probably better than it's ever been. Loving the core gameplay pillar change and how they include so much more discussion about upcoming features there. Outside of that, the rest of the communication is mostly around sales and events. So yeah. Letters from the chairman are difficult to deal with at times. They tend to represent one of CIG's worst qualities, and that's goalpost moving. The last three years, it was all about 4.0. This year, it's all about 1.0, and we don't even have 4.0 yet. I really like to see them share their current direction, but when it's always changing so drastically, it can be really tough to kind of read. Hopefully, this one sticks, and we can see them progressing towards a 1.0, but even... In 324, there are some features where you can kind of see that they might have a clear vision and path, and then there are others that are just making my head spin. So those are my thoughts on the last six months or so of Star Citizen. Overall, the progress that they have made has not really met my expectations after CitizenCon. I was hoping for a lot more features uh, and the ones that we had before to be a lot more polished considering how much time was spent on them. And I absolutely was hoping to see more content by now. Much of what we're experiencing is a big improvement, though, on what we played in 2023. And I got to say, I wasn't expecting to have meshing live now, right? But the number of tests and the inability to see progress being made on previous tests is a really frustrating part of the year so far. And yeah, CIG's communication in general is not great. But I think I was engaged with the game and generally the goings on about the game more in these six months than I ever have been. And yeah, that's my midterm report card for Star Citizen, I guess. How are you guys feeling about everything? Sound off in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe if you guys are enjoying the videos and I'll catch you guys in the next one.